And good evening. We welcome you to Rex Lindsay Tiger Stadium in Liberty Center. It is quarterfinal round of Division 5 Region 18 football playoffs. What a matchup we've got for you tonight here on WOSN as the Tigers of Liberty Center, champions of the NWOAL and undefeated on the season, take on the 8 and 3 Eagles of Liberty Benton. Hello again, everyone, alongside my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. Miles, I don't know if we could ask for a better night here. Second round of the playoffs. We're looking at mid 60s, a little bit of wind but pretty good for the playoffs. Yeah, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Great weather, Randy. It is. Two really fantastic football teams with really opposite type of uh, offenses, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you say styles make fights, this is a great fight because you have the high-flying precision attack of Liberty Benton and that ground-and-pound offense of Liberty Center. It should be a fun one. Now let's talk about the Eagles of Liberty Benton coming in at 8-3 and three on the year. We saw firsthand their opening round win as they took out the Archibald Blue Streak 63-35. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Quarterback Cam Garlock, the night he had last week, 21 of 29, 388 yards, added 71 yards on the ground, six passing touchdowns. Yeah, 21 to 29, but I don't really remember any, any incomplete passes at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was throwing receivers before they were open. He was throwing them open. He was absolutely on fire. And how about Seth Elkert a week ago? That guy was just, you could not cover him. He was a big play every time he touched the ball. Yeah, Elkert, eight catches, 221 yards, three touchdowns. By the way, 6'3", 180, good-looking kid. Oh, and he's finishing his freshman year. <laughs> yeah, how nice is it to be a coach at Liberty Benton when you know that you have Seth Alkert for the next three years? Uh, we see, uh, go back to Garlock. One thing I was going to mention, you talked about the 21 to 29. You think, well, maybe he had a good day. Oh, by the way, he's completing 83% of his passes on the year. 83% of the passes, 32 TDs, and only 11 interceptions. But here's the thing, though, Randy. It's his feet that do wonderful things, right? He either buys time with his feet, finds an open receiver, or how many times a week ago against Archbold, he convert an, a third down and long with his feet, extended drives. He is a playmaker extraordinaire. And one other player that had a big night offensively, actually all the way around, Junior Mason Mod, four touchdowns, oh, two catches, one running, Oh, and he also returned an interception for a score. You know, yeah, no big deal. The pick six was a real turning point in that game a week ago because Archbold was driving the football. He intercepted it on a wheel route that looked like it was going to be a touchdown for Archbold, but he came out of nowhere. He turned that game around. Mason Mod, he is a dynamic dude. So one of the big matchups that we're going to take a look at tonight is this offensive line for Liberty Benton going up against the defense for Liberty Center. Miles, what do you kind of see here tonight? Oh, boy, it's strength versus strength. You got big guy versus big guy, <clears> and that Devin Malta beyond a for uh, Liberty Benton. He is a first team all BVC player. He's going to be playing on Saturdays. Isaiah Higgins, the other tackle, number 74. He's a big dude also, 6'2", 275. He's a first time BVC player and he's they've got their work cut out for him because on the other side, Owen Box, defensive player of the year in the NWL, number 62. Landon Bockelman, number 75. Those two anchor a really good Liberty Center defensive line. A couple questionable things for Liberty Benton. A couple of things I'm sure they worked on during the week. This defense last week did allow 35 points to Archibald. Blue Streaks also ran for 224 yards, threw for another 231. So you're looking at defense that allowed 454 yards of offense last well, week. Anytime you play a high octane offense, so you're going to give up some points, right? But this is a Liberty Benton team that knows that and they're okay with it as long as they score more than you. <laughs> so they want a game that's in the 40s, high 30s. And of course, Liberty Center, they'd be more than happy if this is like a 21-14 type of game. And one other thing I think both of us were a little concerned about with Liberty Benton is the night went on when we saw that game, Eagles were penalized 12 times for 90 yards. Yeah, I, there's no chance they win the football game tonight if they don't limit those penalty numbers. They have 12 again. Think of how many false start penalties they had a week ago. Yeah. Yeah, they have those again, put themselves behind the chains. That really, really falls in the hands of Liberty Center's defense. Liberty Benton looking to get off to a good start. Take a look at the numbers. They've outscored their opponents 159-39 to in the opening quarter. And a bit of an X factor tonight, I believe, would be the kicking game. Kaysen Doolittle, 58-58 of on extra points this yep. year. Both teams feature really good kickers, but Carson, Kaysen Doolittle is a fantastic kicker. And both of them have legs. Kaysen Doolittle, I think, can make it from about 40-45. So if it comes down to that, 
make sure you have the win with you. There is a little bit of win tonight. Might come down to a kick to win this. All right, Miles, let's turn our attention now to the home team, the Tigers of Liberty Center, coming in at 11 and 0, scored on their first six possessions as they took care of Port Clinton in the opening round here at uh, Rex Lindgren Stadium. 61-20, ran for 432 yards. Colton Cruz at 115, couple of scores. Trenton Cruz, 100 and a score. Matthew Orr, their leading rusher, their big fullback. I don't want to say a night off, but five <laughs> carries, 58 yards, kind of limited action. Yeah. Seven different players ended up carrying the football for the Tigers as they just had a typical Liberty Center football game. They've almost run for 3,000 yards as a team, a little bit under 3,000. I think it's 2884. They are a great running football team. And how are they able to run the football so well? Well, they execute so well, Randy. It's a wing team base offense. They trap you on the inside. They'll run the buck sweep concept. They'll run power. They can do it all. Look for them to really box in. Liberty Benton tonight kind of run right at him. Give the ball early to Matthew Orr. He only averages about 10 yards per carry, so why not give it to the fullback? Number 35, he is the beginning of their offense. And it all starts with senior quarterback Zane Sider. Five of six passing for 112 yards and a touchdown. Also added 65 yards on the ground and a couple of scores. So a guy that's able to run and he's picked up this offense in the two years that he's played. Now first team all NWOA Al Zane Sider, 965 yards throwing and at 602 rushing the football. We had them a couple times early in the year and again his feet extended drives especially mm -hmm. in that big win against Wasian that we had him early in the year so Zane Zider wow what a dynamic player he has really improved from a year ago you saw that lineup on the screen the Liberty Center defense uh, got uh, beat up a little bit 264 yards to Port Clinton they had three big scoring plays so 204 of the 264 we're giving up on the three scoring plays that Port Clinton had last week. It's a tough defense, especially to run the football against because the big guys inside that we talked about, Box, Bockelman, Navarre, those guys down in, the, in front. If you got three guys, Randy, that can control the run against a five interior line of an offensive line, that, that really puts your defense at an advantage, and a lot of times they do it. But to me, the most improved part of this defense is the back uh, secondary. Guys like Zyder, Cruz, Zacharias, and Chapa, a year ago, you could throw the ball against this team and you'd have no problem. A little bit different this year. Those guys are like glue on receivers. Yeah, I was going to make sure you actually took my last note away from me and as I have my, my bullet points here. Uh, we talked about the matchup, the front line of Liberty Benton against that defense of Liberty Center. How about the secondary of Liberty <laughs> Center against that Liberty Benton passing attack? You see Landon Cruz top the NWOAL six interceptions. Tanner Klein, more of a linebacker, but he's able to play in coverage three interceptions. Zayn Zider with two interceptions, and then Z uh, Jeff Zacharias, another player we saw, saw them uh, early in the year, I believe it was either Archibald or Wasi on their week four, week five, yep. had what, two two breakups? Yep. Wasn't really thrown at the rest of the year. Yeah, I think Jeff Zach Zacharias is the most improved football player on this team from a year ago. He, he can flat out cover, and it, he'll come up and hit. That's the thing about Liberty Center, right? If you're going to play them, you have to be physical. You can't just be a finesse football team because they're going to box you in, and that secondary, you're going to catch a short pass, well, you're going to pay the price. They are a physical team. Team. All right, let's get to everyone's favorite part of our pregame. Let's get to our keys to the game. And, Miles, let's start with our uh, visiting Eagles of the Liberty Benton. Yeah, number one, who can? Cam can, that's for sure. The dynamic quarterback. He's going to have to have another big game. I don't know if we've seen a better game by a player in the last couple years than his game last week against Archbold. He's going to have to have another big one. Maybe not six touchdowns and no interceptions, but he's going to have to have another big game tonight. Four by one equals hey, big that's plays. that's a track. That's track. That doesn't. <laughs> Count. <laughs> Do you remember the four receiver set and one receiver set they ran against Archibald gave Archibald all kinds of fits. They're going to have to break that out again. See how Liberty Center covers that. If you don't uh, equal up and, and you allow backside throws to one-on-one -on -one coverage, Liberty Center is going to have a tough time. And then number th three, own A and C gaps. This is a run team for Liberty Center that will pound A gap through trap and then they will run buck sweep to the outside and C gap. If you don't take those away, you're going to have a long night against them. How about some keys for the uh, homestanding Liberty Center Tigers. Yeah, number one, go right at them. Turn this game into a hash-to-hash -hash game, a phone booth game, if you will. Make it real physical, right? Go for the body blows, hit them low, hit them low, and then come back and hit them with a knockout punch later. Go right at Liberty Benton. Make this a physical football game. Number two, outside pressure. We know that Cam Garlic likes to get out of the pocket, right? So bring pressure on the outside so he has to step up into the pocket. And then number three, who has better feet, Randy? Who has better feet? Is it Cam Garlic or Zane Zider, both those guys can extend plays with their feet. 
if they're going to have better feet, it's got to be Zane Zider tonight that's going to extend plays more than Cam Garlock. All right, before we get any further into our pregame, we'll uh, turn things over to the Liberty Center Band as I believe they're just about ready to perform our national anthem. Hey, Raider Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Rex Lincoln Tiger Stadium in the Liberty Center. Final home game of the year for the Tigers. And that is the backdrop that we have uh, looked at. Off to our right as they just wrapped up the national anthem. See the Liberty Center team making their way onto the field. There is, uh, there's atmosphere in a lot of places, Miles. I don't know what anything compares to a sellout, which it uh, pretty much is here tonight in Liberty Center. Now, how cool is it when you pull up for a playoff game at Liberty Center, the <laughs> hundreds of people in line <laughs> waiting for them to open the gate so they can run and grab a seat. It is a football tradition here in Liberty Center that they love. All right, we'll take a look at the brackets in uh, Region 18. This is the uh, upper part. So the winner of this one will get either Coldwater or Huron in a regional semifinal at a site that will be determined Sunday afternoon by the OHSAA. That game will be played next Friday. Of course, when they go to the neutral sites for the regional semifinals, they do break up into the Friday and Saturdays. And I'm trying to do this from memory. I believe it's divisions one, two, three, and five that'll be on Friday this year, which will leave four, six, and seven to be played on Saturday. Well, uh, take a look at the top bracket. I really think Liberty advances. Uh, I like the odds there at Liberty advancing to the next round. What do you think? I, I like it. Yeah. So let's we'll take a look at the bottom half as you see Tenora out of the GMC, a couple of NBC teams and a future NBC team in Oak Harbor. So uh, those two winners will meet up at a site to be determined. So as the night goes on and we learn uh, who will be playing in some of those games, might be able to give you some educated guesses, of course. Things happened, and, and we'll say, well, it's a deadlock that this place makes sense, and game gets moved 100 miles away. That's uh, yeah, th that seems to happen to quite a bit. But uh, what do you see there in that bottom half of the bracket? Don't be shocked if Tenora pulls a, what people will say a huge upset. But we know that Tenora football team they were hamstrung with not having their full complement of players for part of the year. Mm -hmm. They're at full strength. They should be if they've been healthy and had all their parts all year long. They could have easily been a two or three seed. So that is what we're playing for. Liberty Center won the coin toss, and uh, they deferred their pick into the second half. So Liberty Benton will get the ball first as the officials have uh, ran the ball in. Apparently no one from Liberty Center brought a football with them, so the official doubles as the ball boy. I'm sure uh, it's exactly what he wanted tonight. Well, the, the wild thing, too, is you kick your own ball, then when – they receive it and come up for the first play. Then they have to switch balls again because Liberty Benton has to have their ball out. And you know the kicker likes one specific that yes. hits better off his foot than yep. any of the other ones. That's why you put up. the little K on it, the mark. That's, that's the right. kicker ball. And it double things up. The uh, wind, that which has picked up here as the Knights progressed, has uh, blown the ball off the tee. So, official. All right, this is your last one, son. Well, if it blows off again, you know what they have to do, right? They'll have to hold it. They have yep. to hold it. Someone has to be the Charlie Brown. And I will tell you this. I think you should always have someone hold it because have you ever seen anyone return one for a touchdown after you <laughs> held the football? I've never seen it. Oh, uh, and you know that kid's out there. Yeah, you know he's going to hit my finger. You know he's going to kick me right in the finger. We got this one underway. Second round of the playoffs have begun. This one's going to hit it to 10 and make a beeline for the corner. That one's going to go out of bounds. Good break for Liberty Benton. Now, Paul Hamps, that's the special teams coordinator here at Liberty, wanted to go corner kick on it, just a little bit too much, rolls out, and kick it's going to really be the advantage of Liberty Benton. They're going to have great starting field position at the 35. After the penalties, Miles said they'll take over to the 35. Just underway, you see there on our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Five receivers set here on first down for the Eagles. Liberty Center showing dropping eight in coverage early. Garlock looks, he'll fire, comes to the near side, pass is complete. Brought down immediately as they go to Kaysen Doolittle, and it's a gain of just shy of about five yards. Playing a soft coverage, it looks like they're going to let him catch a short pass and come up and thump at Zacharias that recognized the hitch in a hurry, delivered a hit. They'll give him four, it's going to bring him second and six. As Miles said, you see three down linemen for the Tigers, everyone else dropping back in coverage. 
Liberty Center is going to go all out to stop this passing game. Again, through for 425. When you add in the uh, halfback pass, that went for a big play as well. Yeah, changing the call, took a look at that Liberty Center defense. Garlock now, Liberty Benton doesn't like something. And Coach Garlock a little upset in an early timeout here. I don't think they were ready to see eight men dropping in coverage by Liberty Center. Uh, this is a Liberty Center defense that over time when they've seen Liberty spread Center teams, you know, defensive coordinator Matt Bryan dials up lots of pressure early in this game, electing to play coverage, rush their three, and I think that threw off Liberty Benton. Well, one thing we didn't really talk a lot about in our pregame, Miles, that uh, you talked that front three for Liberty Center. We've had the uh, privilege of seeing Liberty Center a couple of times this season. We've seen them be able to rush really without blitzing. Is that a big thing that they're going to have to do tonight? Yeah. You're, you're gonna, if you're a Liberty Benton fan, you're going to laugh. You're like, well, they only have three. Don't be surprised if those three wreck some havoc. Well, here's the thing. Owen Box, he's like a human forklift, right? He just picks people up and moves them out of the way. He is a strong dude. Box and Bockelman both power clean over 240, so they're strong dudes. And don't forget about Seth Navarre. He is a strong man as well. So if they can get pressure with three, oh boy, watch out. Hey, by the way, failed to mention this meeting second all time between these two. Liberty Benton owns the only other win. It came 10 years ago, the opening round of the 2012 playoffs. Second down pass is going to be complete and again. Another immediate tackle. Not a very good spot for Liberty Benton. They're going to lose a yard just on the spot as we take a look at the Heigl Insurance replay. Yeah, playing cover four behind it, and that's Chapa that sees the ball thrown and comes up and makes a big hit. Two passes complete, but two physical tackles. Heigl Insurance in Finley, are replay sponsor. They have over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, offering coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. Big early third down coming up here for Liberty Benton. Struggle in that department against Archville. Just went for it a lot on fourth down. Third short, Garlock straight up the middle. Looks like he's gonna have enough for the first down. Well, we talked about the feet of Garlick being a big factor in this football game. First third down of the game, he converts it. Just a quarterback a lead run, well, not really lead, but quarterback run inside. Three down linemen, he had five blocking him. That's the advantage for Liberty Benton. To Swanton Welding, first down. Swanton Welding Company providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. First down for Liberty Benton. They've now gotten out to the 46-yard line. Opening possession of the night. Switching up, two receivers come to the near side. You see an H-back lined up in that far side. We'll run out of this with Bod. He'll get to midfield before he is brought down. That's Orr that comes in from the second level. The linebacker who's playing off, running inside zone. Cruz tries to take on a block, but it's going to be Orr that takes it. And honestly, if you're Liberty Center, you've got to be happy that Liberty Benton tries to run the football a little bit. Again, our insurance, our replay is brought to you by Eagle Insurance. Second and six from midfield. Yeah, switching to a four down look now for Liberty Center. High snap, Garlock able to get that, has a man open again on that far side, pass is caught, and it's another Swanton Welding first down as Seth Elkert, big player in that win last week, comes up with a big catch. Yeah, another hitch route outside. Linebackers are gonna have to get out underneath that, that's Tanner Klein that took a bad angle to help out Zyder, but Zyder delivers another big hit. It's a first down as Liberty Benton has reached the Liberty Center side of the field at the 43 yard line. Cam Garlock looks over to a sideline for the play. The receivers of that side don't have very far to go. Figure out what they're going. Five receiver look once again. Garlock with the snap. Steps up, has time, fires, passes, caught at the 40. Short gain, I believe that was Lincoln Garlock came up with that catch. And it's gonna be second down. Now Garlock comes up a little bit gimpy. Missed a couple weeks ago with a hip injury. I see the contact. Ball a little bit high, allows for Klein to get over there and hit him, or Cruz rather, to go over and hit him. Second, we'll call it six. Ball spotted, you see it there, just inside the 40-yard line. Yeah, partner early in this game, it's already three hitches by Liberty Benton. At some point in time, they're going to go hitch and go because those corners are going to start flying up on the hitch route. Garlic has an extra blocker. There it is, deep downfield. That one's going to be incomplete, overthrown. Zane Zider back there in coverage for the Tigers. 
and it's going to bring up another third down. Yeah, kind of tough to throw the go route to the short side of the field. They brought some pressure that time, and Liberty Center, or Liberty Benton rather, they recognized it, had the one-on-one -on -one matchup they want, but pretty good coverage by Zyder on the outside against the freshman Klein. I've seen, Eckert. seen Liberty Benton already convert one third down, looking for another one. Third and six, clock is stopped right now, 8.17 left to go opening quarter on our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Yeah, it looks like Liberty Center is going to play zone coverage again, keep everything in front on third down. Garlock looking, fires middle of the field, that one's going to be intercepted. Got a flag, there might be a flag down on the far side, just take a look at the replay. Just playing center field, waiting for the post route to come to him. That's going to be intercepted by Landon Cruz. Landon Cruz, fantastic job of being disciplined. Garlic thought that the middle of the field would be open on the post route. Momentum now big with Liberty Center, but if you're Liberty Benton, don't be too upset. It's kind of like a punt, isn't it? That's going to be the uh, team leading seventh interception for Landon Cruz. Penalty, by the way, was a sideline warning. I want to say issue to Liberty Benton. Missed the call. The uh, teams sending their uh, different units onto the field. Liberty Center with the turnover. They'll take, take over at their own 13. And they'll start in a shotgun. Zyder will run out of this straight ahead. He's going to get uh, maybe a yard, it looks like. All right, you see all those white jerseys fly up on the jet motion. They knew it was either going to be a sweep of the jet or quarterback keep. Well schooled Zyder fundamentally. Zyder Scott Arnold, defensive coordinator for Liberty Benton, had him ready for that. We'll give him a yard to the 14, or it's going to be second and nine. It's the Liberty Center, a wing T team. You got like that. Oh, you play a shotgun, we play a shotgun. A uh, wing T, but out of a million different formations. It's the same one Zyder will throw. Pass is caught. Looks like it's going to be enough for the Swanton Welding first down as the receiver was pushed back. We'll see where they mark the spot. They do move the sticks. That's a curl flat combo. You're going to roll your quarterback, get him a window, and this is either going to be caught or it's going to stick into the face mask of Chapa. <laughs> Zyder had a little extra oomph on that one. Think he's keyed up for this game? It will be a Swanton Welding first down for the Tigers as they get outside the 20, down to their 24. Already seen about five minutes of this clock go by. Each team's had the football once. There might be limited possessions in this one. Now back to that traditional lineup for Liberty Center and a big hit on the pitch, laying the wood there. It's number 50, it's Ethan Bauer. Yeah, Ethan Bauer coming from the inside tackle spot. Beats the block of Box. And oftentimes you hear someone say that Owen Box got beat. Great play, tackle for Lawson. If you can keep this Liberty Center team not winning first down, oh boy, now you have a huge advantage defensively. Scott Arnold is stacking the box with lots of Liberty Benton defensive players. No gain on the play will bring up a second and 10. And there is the trap, or continuing to fight for it. It's gonna take about five jerseys to bring him down, but it's gonna be maybe yard to the 25. Yeah, such a bread and butter play for a wing T offense running inside trap. Liberty Benton knows that you have to take away a gap if you're going to beat them. So far, early in this game, they're having success. Third and nine. And tough break for Liberty Center as we see Colton Cruz, number two, jogging off the field, going straight for the trainer. Yes, hopefully he gets back in this football game. A heck of a football player. That would be a big loss. Three receivers set, Liberty Center didn't like something, the Tigers will take a timeout. Yeah, you gotta wonder if the timeout is because of the personnel change with Cruz going out of the game. It's timeout on the field, we'll step aside here. No score in the first quarter. Big third down coming up here for Liberty Center, third and nine from their own 24. See there in our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, 552 left to go. In this opening quarter, no score. This Division 5, Region 18, regional quarterfinals. We said these two have met just once before, back in 2012 in the regional quarterfinals, which was then the opening round. 
Liberty Benton won that game 16-7. We'll tell you a little bit more about that as the night goes on. Zider's going to run. He's got an opening. Needs to get to the 34. And it looks like he's going to have the SWAT welding first down as he puts his head down and gets out past the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Yeah, watch Zider. The determination. It looks like he's going to hit the flat right there. Recognizes it won't get the first down. And then how fast does he take off after he makes that decision and finishes it with physicality? Whose feet are better? Well, right now, Zine Zider's. So mark him out at the 38, picked up about 13 on the scramble. Give the Tigers a first down. They go back to those split back set. Wind beginning to pick up, might have heard it there through our headsets. Looking for the fake, Zider's gonna get rid of the football. He's gonna throw this one away. Had a receiver going to that sideline. Now Jake Elkert, number three, he's the one that broke it up. Too much penetration got in the face of the quarterback or else there would have been a guy open. Zider had to throw it way before he wanted. Early in this football game, Randy, this Liberty Benton defense doing a good job of over-penetrating, getting the backfield, causing problems for this Liberty Center team. Again, another first down win for Liberty Benton. Colton Chambers, number 24, is down the sideline, so it was the reason why there was no intentional grounding. Second and 10. Zider will keep it again. Another big gain as he'll get into Liberty Benton territory. They'll knock him down at the Eagle 49, and it's enough for another Swant Welding first down. Yeah, this is a tremendous block on the edge on the outside. They're going to pull around. Owen Box crashes down, then the pullers will come. Balkaman leads the way. Good block on the perimeter as well. Everybody for Liberty Benton bid on the inside fake. Forgot about number 10. He's dangerous with the football. Clock running inside of five minutes left to go opening quarter here in our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Liberty Center's taking a few plays, but they've now got into Liberty Benton territory. And kind of the over formation here. There is Colton Cruz, gonna see him back in the lineup. He's gonna stop, move, get in the open space, brought down from behind at the 30 yard line. It's gonna be a gain of 19 and another first down. Yes, yeah, the buck sweep, right? They're going to go over formation to the left, overload the left. The defense doesn't adjust, so it's going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, nobody out there to stop it. Good thing that Elkert runs from behind and makes a touchdown saving tackle. I'll mark him back to the 31, so pick up 18, but still enough for that Swanton Welding first down. Again, a replace tonight brought to you by Heigl Insurance and Finley. They have over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry. Zider looking to throw, has him at open middle of the field. Chambers makes the first man miss, and it's going to take about four more to bring him down. He's inside the 20. Ball might have come loose, but it looks like he was down, and it looks like it's going to be enough for another Swanton Welding first down. This is a senior that knows his offense. He throws it before Chambers is even open. Chambers turns his head, and the ball's right on top of him, and the ball placement is fantastic, Randy. Put it on the shoulder, on the chest, right where it needed to be so it would stick in him. It did come out, and luckily it looks like, uh, it's obviously, for Liberty Center, someone fell on top of that. Can't see. Yeah, I think it's Bockelman that hustled down. Number 75, have, huge fumble recovery. Might have also stopped his forward progress. It looked like one of the officials not in a hurry. Get on top of that. Down to 340 and counting to go. Stretch play coming for Liberty Center. Another positive gain on first down as they go back to Chambers. Yeah, great matchup on the edge right here. Box versus Bockelman, or Box versus Multibine right down there, 62 and 75. A little bit of creative blocking inside, but they're going to say, you know what, that's okay. It's the second round of the playoffs. We're going to let you go. Brings up second and five from the 14. Impressive drive for Liberty Center coming after the interception. And more importantly, look at the clock just chiseling away. Liberty Center wants to keep this a minimal possession game. Zider's got two blockers in front of him. They'll take him all the way to the end zone. And it looks like we got the signal. It's not going to be a touchdown. They're going to bring him down just inside the one. I don't know how it's not a touch. It looked like he got in. This is going to be quarterback power. Good kick out by Orr. They're going to bring Navarre on on a pull. Oh, they're going to say his knee was down. Good call by the official. About the one and a half. Put the ball inside the one. Quarterback run has been a huge advantage early in this football game for Liberty Center. A big game for Zider. First and goal from the one. Zider under center will give. 
This is Orr trying to work his way in and he'll get the touchdown. Yeah, 17 touchdowns coming into the night for Orr. Nothing easier than that one as he gets a tremendous block by Colton Cruz. Great, efficient drive for Liberty Center to open this football game. So the extra point coming and our touchdown tonight brought to you by KK Collision, your first call for automotive body, mechanic, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. And the, kick is good. the extra point is good. You see the scoreboard there? Seven nothing, a Liberty Center on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. We'll take a break here on WOSN. Two and a half minutes to go here in our opening quarter. An impressive drive for Liberty Center as the Tigers with a seven to nothing lead over Liberty Benton. 67 Max Walker to kick off. Well, that was a the great Liberty Center type Benton drive, Benton. right? Quarterback Zyder extends plays, extends drives with his feet, gets a run game going a little bit, and then finish it off with a big power run. Kickoff fielded inside the five at about the four yard line. And come out to about the 20 yard line as Lincoln Garlock on the return. Well, you want to get on the field at Liberty Center, you start by playing special teams. Aiden Hammontree, number 15, who's part of the rotation offensively and defensively. They're not afraid to use starters. He runs down, makes a tackle. Eagles start this drive down 7-0 from their own 20. Now one time last drive that Liberty Center brought pressure, Liberty Benton went vertical. Let's see if they're gonna still play soft zone and come up and hit. Eagles. Go a little pop pass and first down to the man in motion. Get it out to Elkert. He will get 10, about five, Elkert maybe six before he's out of bounds of the 26 yard line. Yeah, Elkert who had one of those unbelievable first playoff games a week ago against Archbold. It's gonna be fun to watch him as he evolves in this offense for the next three years. Will he be a guy that maybe takes some snaps behind center or will he always be an outside receiver? It'll be fun to watch. Come back to that five receiver set here on second down. Cam Garlock in that empty backfield. Gets the snap. Fires back to the sticks. That's caught. It'll be another first down as he gets out to Lincoln and he'll get the swat welding first down. Now, Lincoln Garlock's one of those guys that if he catches a hitch, you better be on him in a hurry because he can make a guy miss and climb vertical, run right by you for big yardage and big scores. Get out to the 32 yard line. Quickly get to the line here with a minute and a half to go in our opening quarter. Liberty Center mixing things up a little bit. Last or last play brought Orr on an inside backer blitz to brush four. Garlock quickly fires, going to that far sideline once again. Pass out of the hands of Elkert, incomplete. It's going to bring up second down. Yeah, this one was just on top of Elkert, a little too quick. When you make that break, you got to turn your head around. The freshman was tardy with his eyes. That's why it got by him. See a Liberty Benton. Flip the formation as receivers come over to the near side of the field. There's the four by one set that was so successful against Archbold a week ago. Four receivers to the right, you're gonna force one on one coverage to the left, and that's Garlic by himself. Adjust to the numbers, now he has his whole route tree at his disposal. Saw them throw to the single receiver out of this a few times last week, looks like you do that again. Now Cam Garlic's gonna take off and run and he'll get to the 35, so he'll scramble for about three, and a big third down coming up here for the Eagles. Yeah, not sure why Cam took his eyes off his brother, because he had the out route for about 10 yards that was going to be open, but elected to pull it down, get some positive yardage. Huge third down early in this football game for this Liberty Benton football team. Can't give it back to a hot Liberty Center team. Under a minute left to play here in our opening quarter. Liberty Benton again, taking a little bit of time to get the play in. Play clock getting down to 10 seconds. Already had to use a timeout because of it. Each team with two timeouts here so far. Garlock rolls under a little bit of pressure, fires middle of the field. Pass is caught, nearly intercepted. Tanner Klein 
trying to get his hands up in there, but it's caught for a first down at the 45. Yeah, this is a great throw. This is tough for a left-handed quarterback. Garlic, though, gets his shoulder turned in time, throws it, just barely gets by. Big completion. That's uh, Lemire, Braden Lemire, who came in last week, had a couple nice catches. Good looking young athlete. Boy, they've got some serious talent on the outside in this Liberty Benton offense. Liberty Benton trying to get one more stamp off, but it looks like they're not going to do it as we've come to the end of the opening quarter. Liberty Center has the early lead. We'll take a timeout here in WOSN. Just underway, quarter number two. You see Liberty Center with a 7 0 lead over Liberty Benton as uh, we head to the second quarter. Eagles with a drive. Now they got a man wide open and can't hold on to it. That had touchdown written all over it. A Lincoln Garlock just unsuccessful and being able to haul this one in. Oh, bless his heart. He's got to be the sickest man in America all by himself. It just kind of comes down at a weird angle. Had his hands on it. You can see the frustration that he didn't come up with a throw from his brother. Would have been a huge chunk of yardage for Liberty Benton. Brings up second and 10 from the 45. I go right back to Lincoln. He'll get this one in and absorb a couple of hits. You know that's that was Lincoln's doing, right? I Yeah. You, you like the fact though they went right back to him. Give him a nice easy run, trying to run the screen outside. Initially good, well blocked, but the inside interior of Liberty Center came out and got a thump, and you got to like four or five guys getting involved in an outside tackle. He'll pick up six there. It's going to bring up third and four. As Liberty Benton has moved back into Liberty Center territory once again to the 49. Remember, their only other drive of the night ended with an interception by Cruz at the 13-yard line. Now Liberty Benton thinks they know what the coverage is going to be. It looks like a high three from Liberty Center. Pass. That one nearly intercepted as well. Riley Chapa knew what was coming, knocked it away. Oh, this is a really good job by Chapa. He's playing inside, looking like a linebacker, then flies out. He's going to be the flat defender, knocks it away. So Elkert can't make a big third down conversion, but it looks like a decision time for Liberty Benton, and it's going to be, oh, they're going to bring out the punt team late. Thought for a second they were going to go for it. Fourth and four just inside Liberty Center territory at the 49-yard lines. Chapa, after the great coverage, will run back. He'll be one of the twin return men. They stand at their own 10-yard line. Not a lot of pressure put on. Wobbling punt. This one will be fielded at about the 15. Chapa able to run through first pair of defenders and he'll get a good return out to the 35. Pretty good field position from Liberty Center as they get their second possession of the night. It's a great play by Chapa because he caught it first. That was a tough ball to catch. That was a UFO punt. And then that splits the initial two gunners and does what's great for all great punt returners. Make the first guy miss, then climb vertical. Don't go side to side. Riley Chapa, great special teams play. Liberty Center will have it at their own. 35, 10.55 left to go, opening half. 7 nothing as you see there in our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Yeah, this is a game that looks like it's going to be limited possessions, kind of playing the way that Liberty Center wants. This Liberty Benton defense got to come up big here. Go to the split backs, give him the first man through. It's Cruz into the open space. It's a foot race to the 40, 30, 25. It'll be out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Tracked down by Seth Elkert, but not before a big game. Yeah, but so many bodies up front, and they're going to let the guys go. Kind of the old midline or veer option look. You let Multibine go upfield, give it to Cruz, and the dive just runs right by. Fantastic call. That's an old school dive play. Don't block the guy that's too far out to make the tackle. And Cruz is this Cruz controlling upfield. Gain of 47 on the run. It's a first and 10 from the 18 after the Swanton Welding first down. Now to the I formation. Cruz will get it once again. He'll get pushed back after a yard, maybe two. Well, it kind of warms the heart a little bit there, doesn't it? Seeing the old I formation. Don't see it very often anymore, but that was a fullback in front of a tailback. Run the ISO lead inside. Liberty Benton was ready for it. 
Liberty Benton student section. A little concerned, trying to will their team on to victory. Yeah, is camo it night? Camo night? I'm, yeah, I was going to say. Or uh, Tennessee fan night? A lot of orange over there, too. Good to see Tennessee back among the uh, heavyweights college football. Here's Orr with a run working left side. Well, this is a Liberty Benton defense that has stiffened up after the big run by Cruz. A huge third down. You wonder if they get fourth and short, if there'll be a decision to go for it or kick the field goal. It's a Liberty Center special teams with Ian Rosebrook, as you saw on the extra point. He is a capable kicker. Two scores might be really big, big lead in this football game. Clock nearing the nine minute mark of our opening half. Zyder in a shotgun, third down and about eight. He'll fire, has a man open, fighting, and it looks like that is gonna be close. Take a look as Aiden Hammontree will haul this one in. As is easy, right? Hammontree just takes three steps and turns, and then he's a big fella. He's gonna go through Mason Mod, drags him for another yard or two, and they're gonna say he's just a little bit short. Will be center. Coach Moeller says, you know what? We're gonna be a good team. We gotta get at least a yard on fourth down. Let's go for it. Fourth and one from just inside the 10 yard line. Now look for him to go left here. They put Bachelman next to box. Truck formation on the left hand side. Zyder under center, there is the pitch. Or with a first down and more as he's into the end zone for the KK collision touchdown. That is just a soul-stealing touchdown. Fourth down and short. What do you do? Well, you put the killer bees on one side. Box and Bachman on the left. Toss it to your fullback that gets 10 yards of carry. Another big touchdown. This is a very physical Liberty Center football team. Second touchdown of the night now. Rosebrook on to attempt the extra point. Extra point is up. It's going to hit off the upright. No good, it's about the only thing that hasn't gone right for Liberty Center. But on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, now 13-0 Tigers. And we'll take a break here in WOSN. Go ahead. 13-0 our score, Liberty Center with the lead over Liberty Benton, our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. 8.21 left to go, opening half miles, what'd you see? We take a look at this high goal insurance agency on the extra point. Well, field goals and extra points all about timing, right? Look how high that snap is. Causes the timing to get off just a little doink. bit. And then you get the doink. You see Rosebrook kind of lifted his leg instead of driving through. Wasn't sure about where the ball placement would be because of the high snap. Again, our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Told you this uh, the second meeting all time. Liberty Benton won the first meeting 16 7. Game that was played to fit uh, Finley High School. Why Finley High School? It was uh, a home game for Liberty Benton. They actually wrapped up on their old grass field, three straight home games, tore it up, decided uh, that they could move their game to a Liberty or to a Finley as uh, the Eagles won. And the uh, leading tackler for that Liberty Center, the player that scored all seven points for Liberty Center in that loss and the leading tackler of that team. Who's that? Current athletic director, Caleb Pullman. Uh -huh, all right. Talked a little bit about that when I got here this evening. Yeah, Caleb does a great job getting these games situated. He is running like a chicken with his head cut off before games, isn't he? He is absolutely everywhere. It's been a lot worse now that you're two runs deep into the playoffs. Few more uh, media. A yeah, couple, have, uh, couple yeah, people few, show up. Few don't more, they? few more people have uh, asked for credentials. We appreciate him uh, shoehorning us into the crowd tonight and uh, getting us and our crew set up for this one. Nothing like football here at Liberty Center, and they enjoy the big hits. And there's one right there on first down. Yeah, Bockelman just blows this up. Watch 75 press off the tackle and then get in the backfield, turns it back to Orr <laughs> and hello. You're going to get held up in the backfield. A lot of black jerseys are going to say hello. Be a loss of one. It's going to bring up second and 11. Back at the 23-yard line. Replay sponsor again, Heigl Insurance Agency. 
You have over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, offering coverage for auto home, business life, commercial, and more. The pass broken up there, and it's going to bring up third down. That's going to be the curl route. Let's fake the outside wheel and then come back underneath. Has the window there, just hits the outside shoulder and bounces off. But even had he made that catch, he is going to pay for it. You see the big hit delivered yet again by Landon Cruz. Third and 11 coming up here for the Eagles. Yeah, you got to wonder that drop by Garlock a series ago might be playing in his head, right? Thinking about it still. Dropped another one there. Cam Garlock under pressure is going to throw this one up for grabs, and that's going to be incomplete. Nice job by Zane Sider, number 10 for Liberty, using that sideline as the extra defender. So he's got the task of going one-on-one -on -one with Seth Elkert at a big game last Well, week. he throws it before he wants to because of the leaking going on in the backfield. Two, three, Tigers getting in the backfield, getting pressure on the quarterback, throws it before he wants to, just run out of real estate. How good has this Liberty Center defense been so far tonight? They knew what they were uh, dealing with. Once they've found out their opponent, fourth down punt, this one's going to get hung up. Big gust to win as soon as it is kicked and a sideways bounce, and it's going to be downed on the Liberty Benton side of the field, the 45-yard line. That's just unfortunate more than anything else, partner. Hey, he just kicked it too high, didn't he? <laughs> got it up in that jet stream, and it got pushed too right high, back. Too high, you too far. <laughs> right. But you look at the goalposts, here's the weird thing. The flags are blowing out. So it is a swirling win. You see the big American flag right there. The Star Spangled Banner looking proud. It's blowing that direction. And the goalposts on the other end, the flags are blowing out the other way too. That's that. because you and I are looking away from each other talking. And it's just the wind. That's they put two big talkers outside. <laughs> is it? Is it the uh, wind it's coming the off the lake? It's the vortex. Got that lake effect wind? So Liberty Center will start the Liberty Benton 47, 7.20 to go in our opening half. First down run. We'll pick up a couple of yards as they go back. I believe that was Orr. And good recognition by Anderson Roberts, number 28, playing the outside leverage. Recognized Buck Sweep coming his way. Flew up. Another first down kind of win for Liberty Benton. It's been third down in this football game that they've been losing with Zider making play after play. Game of two on the run is going to bring up second and eight. Liberty Center may try to make this the final possession of the half. You know, the way they run offense, they could. Shotgun look, they'll fake. Zider will keep it straight up the middle. Runs out of one tackler when he dives forward on second effort. He's going to have the SWAT welding first down. Uh, I'm so excited about the trap pull right there. <laughs> look, Bockelman just delivers. Anytime you're an offensive lineman, you get a chance to pull and no one's looking, you just steamroll them. Buckleman delivers a knockout punch on that defender flying up. First down tonight brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company, provided custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Yeah, second time that Liberty Centers ran that counter play for big yardage each time. First and 10 down to the Liberty Benton 35, single receiver. Here's Cruz, he's gonna barely got the hand off, a lot of contact in the backfield on that one. And a good job picking up four yards. Yeah, last series they ran that dive to the left-hand side. This time, good play calling, right? You remember a play that worked? Come back to the other side with it. Coach Moeller, he's got everything dialing up on the offense. They are cooking. Gain of three on the run is going to bring up second and seven from the 32. Everything's been done on precision for Liberty Center. That includes breaking the huddles. Get the lineman to jump. Going back to Cruz, cuts the corner, turns on the Jets, and he's gonna get in for the Liberty Center touchdown. 32 yards for the KK collision touchdown and the Tigers have now upped that lead to 19 nothing. Watch number 50, Tanner Klein to center. He climbs all the way up to third level at the top of the screen and gets a block on the safety that allows Cruz to get free. That is unbelievable work by your center, who Randy, he runs 25 yards to get a block on a safety to lead the way. That is some great work by the offensive line. Cruz untouched. 
Now uh, trouble with a snap on the extra point. And they'll have to do what they can, but that'll be no good. So it's like no one good. thing to work on for Liberty Center, a little problem with the special teams. Yeah, everything's been good except for the one, two snaps really in this football game. Absolutely dominating performance except for the long snap. A 5.15 left to play, opening half all. Tigers now 19-0. We'll take a break here in WOSN. The Liberty men trying to make something happen here. They're going to have to, in a hurry, down 19-0 to Liberty Center. You see there in our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. So 5.15 left to go before we get to halftime. Deep kick. This one fielded at about the 5. Lincoln Garlock straight into that mass of humanity, and he'll get out just past the 20, and that is where the Eagles will begin this drive. And Hammond Tree down there again. Along with his buddy, Waylon Rents. Those two are getting down in a hurry. Hemming in this starting position for Liberty Benton. And partner, dare you say, biggest drive of the year for Liberty Benton, right? It feels like it. They open up in that four receiver set, Cam Garlock. Looking to throw, he'll fire, pass is gonna be broken up. Incomplete pressure applied just as the catch was going to be made with Jeff Zacharias right there. How about a shoulder pad to the lower spine? Ouch. I wonder why the ball has dropped Zacharias running through receivers. A physical, physical secondary here in Liberty Center. It's going to bring up second and 10. Garlock's going to try to run. He'll run out of one would-be tackler, but it's the second and third that'll bring him down. And he might have gotten a yard. We'll see how far they move the down box. I like the design. Matt Braun, defensive coordinator here at Liberty Center, has put Owen Box at, at set at over top to center. He's put him out wide. Do you remember when the Buffalo Bills had Bruce Smith and they'd move him around? Mm -hmm. Same kind of concept. Get the matchup that you want. Move your defensive lineman around. Get the matchup you're looking for against a lineman you want to rush against. Gain a one on the run. It's going to bring up a third and nine from the 22. Garlock firing, long throw to the near sideline. Pass is going to be caught out past the 30 as he finds his brother Lincoln. It looks like that's going to be enough for Swant Welding first down. Yeah, best throw of the night by Cam Garlock. That is a big time throw from hash all the way to sideline. If you want to be a quarterback in the NFL, you have to throw that with a certain velocity. Cam Garlock, great throw. So Riley Chapman in the NFL might have been flagged 15 more yards at the end of that. <laughs> might have. Double clutch, and then the wobbler that's going to be incomplete through the hands of Doolittle. Yeah, that was one that Garlic wished he could have back. He started hopping up and down. As soon as he threw it, knew it was going to be a little bit too high for his kicker slash receiver. It's going to bring him second and 10 now from the 31-yard line. Still 4.05 left to go before we get to halftime. Garlock rolls to the right, he'll fire, pass is caught, and it's going to take second or third hit before the receiver is brought down. Braden Lemire will haul that one in. Yeah, this is a great concept. They run the wheel route, but then it's a wheel and stop because they recognize the fact that Liberty Center recognized the wheel route, and then they're going to recognize that they recognize, so they stopped the route. Great design. Ball come out to the 43, pick up of 12. It's enough for Swanton Welding first down. By four receivers to the short side. Garlock fires middle of the field. That one in a little bit behind Garlock's his intended target. Oh, they're going to be sick tomorrow when they watch film because Doolittle is open on the post. Nobody around. It's an easy touchdown. Garlock doesn't see him, though. Throws short instead. Can bring him second and 10 now. That wind just can't make up its mind what it wants to do. Uh, dice no, down, picks up, dice it, down, picks up. It knows what it's doing, it's blowing hard. Garlock gets the high snap, has time. Can't find anyone now. He's gonna throw back across the field. That one's gonna be incomplete. Everybody here is gonna say, that should be intentional grounding because there's no, no receiver near the area. Don't see a flag. A couple of Liberty Center players calling for one. 
Well, another big third down here, though, for Liberty Benton. Third and ten. What do you dial up? Last time they went four by one, hit the out route. This time, five receivers. If you're Liberty Center, do you play coverage or you bring some pressure? Looks like they're going to drop eight, make that a real tough throw to get the conversion. Cam Garlock, high snap once again, trying to set up. Can't find anyone now under pressure. He's going to have to get rid of the football. It's going to be incomplete. Had Mason Mott on the sideline. Mott wasn't quite sure if he was supposed to stay in the flat or take off down the field. And a little miscommunication. It's going to bring up fourth down. Now how about Bachelman then? What an athlete. Chasing down the speedy quarterback. Ran out of time because he is being chased by number 75. Punt team. Now looks like they're going to stay go. on the field. Offense, excuse me, just a few uh, changes, some personnel. Back to that four receiver set to the field this time. Big fourth down, high snap, Garlock able to get it. Looking to throw, fires, has a man open right at the sticks. Right now from where the far official is, it's a yard short. And the near officials say the same thing. Good work by our camera crew with the officials. It's a game of nine. Not enough for the first down. Liberty Center will hold. Oh, it looks like when Garlic catches this, he's going to fall forward for the conversion. But Landon Cruz just flies up from the safety spot and denies him that extra half yard that they need. This Liberty Center defense, especially the secondary, has just been fantastic all night long. Big stop for Liberty Center. They take over at their own 48. 306 to play in our first half with the Tigers leading 19-0 in our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Here's the double wing set. Give to the first and only man through. It's Orr who uses his arm to stay upright and what could have been a two yard gain turns into about four, maybe five. Now Liberty Benton so worried about the outside attack of Liberty Center that they really in effect only have six in the box because the two outside linebackers are playing so wide expecting outside run that they can't help anything between A and B gap. Tigers back in Liberty Benton territory to Eagle 48. Next snap's gonna come with under two and a half minutes to go. Quick pitch or, but the officials are going to whistle this one dead. We're going to have a false start on Liberty Center. Best of my knowledge, I believe that is the first infraction of the night. It is. Flag on the play, Liberty Center is charged with the You're almost shocked start. by it, right? Because they've played so clean so far, other than the two snaps on extra point, that a false start, you're kind of shocked, puts them behind the chains, and this is a... Liberty Benton defense that needed some help. Got it on the false start. Back to a second and about 11. Back of the 47. Clock will wind down to 2.20 to play. Quick pitch back to Orr. Able to cut up field. He'll get to the yardage back plus some. Back to unscheduled, as they say, third down here, but a third and short. Yeah, nice burst by Orr. Catches the pitch, and this gets vertical. Good block by Cruz. Liberty Benton was ready for it. Just better execution by Liberty Center. Tiger's going to be in a little bit of a hurry. Third and two, back to Orr. Same play, and it looks like he'll have the swat leveling first down still on his feet. Finally, he's going to be brought down inside the 35 to about the 34. That's Seth Navarre, who's going to pull around, gets another block by Cruz. And then the power G on the outside. Well, there's just nobody out there for the first six yards. That's got to be really disconcerting for Scott Arnold, defensive corner for Liberty Benton. They have yet to stop this Liberty Center team. This is the Liberty Center version of the two minute offense here, down to a minute 35 to go. Back to Orr. He's gonna bounce off a couple of tacklers. He'll get down to the 30. Coach Moeller working the sideline. I thought he was gonna break free. Clock continues to wind. Each team still with two timeouts as well. Trevor Otley. Trevor Otley gets in on the tackle. First team BVC player. Randy, he is a guy that makes plays for them. 22 tackles for loss this year. First time we were able to call his name. That tells you how good Liberty Center's offensive line has been. Gain a four on the run is going to bring up second and six. Here's Cruz, and once again, able to break out, gets a big play, gets a little bit of help as well as he's pushed out of bounds. But they have found something they like, attacking the outside leverage. Another kick out block. 
They could run that all the way to Kansas. Kick it out, kick it out, kick it out. Stops clock, 59 seconds to go before halftime. Down to the 19 yard line. Another Swan Welding first down. Liberty Center may try to put this one away before we get to the half. One high safety, play action pass on a seven route will be there. Instead it's a give to the fullback, which is or he'll get, it's like maybe a yard and it looks like the Tigers will take one of their two remaining timeouts. Brady Burkmeyer, 107 tackles, leads this team, the inside linebacker, recognized inside trap. You see tackle, or you see the guard step at you or pull, you fill a gap. Burkmeyer played the trap really well. Second and nine coming up here for Liberty Center, 53 seconds left to go. And take a look at that helmet for Liberty Benton right there. Looks like the state of Wisconsin on the side of that, doesn't it? You know what, how that happens, partner? Yeah, you use it to make a lot of tackles. You do. That's Gavin Gillig, number 74. And that's a point of pride for guys. You know, a coach will say, do you want another decal? you want a different helmet? No, no. We used no. to have white helmets, and we'd count how many different colors we'd have on it. I was about ready to played. ask you that. Yeah, yeah. doesn't there? I said, I, I don't know if people do it anymore, but I know there used to be a, an award. You, you had more, color, you know, who had the most colors on their helmet at the end of the year. Oh, yeah. Offensive lineman, we would check at the end of the night. Yeah, oh, I got five green marks on my helmet. How many do you have? Lineman got to do something to keep each other <laughs> We don't get touchdowns. That's right? it, yeah. He's second to nine. Coming up here, Zider looking to throw. Has a man open. Pass is caught. Little stutter step. And it's going to work his way into the end zone as Landon Cruz will come up with a KK collision touchdown. This is a Liberty Center offense that can't be stopped. Look at the throw on the hitch route, and that's a great corner outside in Mason Mod. A little yoit and double yoit to get outside. Unbelievable work. Landon Cruz has had a great first half. Big touchdown before the end of the half. 46 seconds left. Makes it 25 nothing, and with a couple of missed extra points, it appears as if the Tigers will go for two and try to get some of the points back. Zider for two, looking for the corner, that one's gonna be caught. Hammondry with a two point conversion and it's now 27-0 Liberty Center. Yeah, Cardinal Sin in the secondary. When you're on the goal line, you don't give up hitch and you don't give up slant. You take inside leverage away. Too easy for Liberty Center. So Liberty Center with a big lead. We'll take a break here as we inch closer to halftime at WOSN. Forty-six seconds, as you see there on our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, twenty-seven nothing. Nice gentleman in a row in front of us saved us from a uh, destructive popcorn ball. Yeah, they're throwing all kinds of things up in the fans. They've had foam footballs. They've had our cameraman Rick got one. Says Tigers pop the Eagles. It's a popcorn ball, right there. Fantastic. That's like the size of a baseball, Randy. Yeah. World Series going on. Phillies thought they were hitting popcorn balls last night. Deep kickoff fielded by Lincoln Garlock from the three, looking to the sideline. Able to dance out of one would-be tackler, but the rest of the group meet up with him. They'll hold him inside the 25. And if you're Liberty Benton, what do you do here in this final 38 seconds? Well, you're down by 27, can't get worse, right? You try to do something with the 38 seconds you got. But Waylon Rents, number 19. When you're gonna return a kick, Rents is due. He's going to come deliver a hit. Number 19, him and uh, Hammontree have been fantastic on kickoffs. And 63, Stephen Brogan. First and 10, Liberty Benton. Ball Liberty Benton with this run. one. And again, Liberty Center won the coin toss deferred, so the Tigers, with a big lead, have the football to begin the second half. Garlock looking to throw, has a man. That is caught by Doolittle. And he will get out of bounds after getting the Swan Welding first down near the 40-yard line. Well, if you're watching this, you're probably going to say, well, where's this been all night long for Liberty Benton? No, it's okay. See the soft coverage by Liberty Center. They're going to allow short routes with 33 seconds. Corner was playing way off, make the tackle at Zacharias on the stop. 
Coming to the near side, this pass caught as the receiver will get out of bounds once again, close to a first down as he'll find Lee Meyer. Yeah, Lee Meyer, nice looking athlete. But one thing Liberty Center has done, boy, they've limited Seth Elkert, huh? Huge night last week against Archbold. Hadn't said his name much in this first half. There's another Swan Welding first down to the 49. 27 seconds to go. Garlock firing once again. Nice job coming back to the football. Fisher was going to say that hit the uh, turf. But Lincoln Garlock, great effort. Nearly come up with that one. Now you see three down linemen, only one linebacker in the middle of the field for Liberty Center last snap. Absolutely begging Liberty Benton to try and run the football. Second and 10 coming up here. Just shy of midfield to 49. Giant Tiger logo here. Kip Kern Field. Tigers are playing a little bit more pressure. Here's the screen. Lincoln Garlock with the room. He's going to be bumped forward. Big hit. He's going to stop the clock momentarily down to the uh, 32. And now it looks like Liberty Benton is going to use as the officials are going to stop the clock here as the Eagles do use one of their timeouts. We'll take a look at the Heigl Insurance replay. Colin Cruz gets just enough of them or else this is going to be a touchdown. Tremendous call at the right time by Scott Garlick the head football coach over at Liberty Benton and his offensive coordinator. About Lincoln Garlock able to fly forward about four yards after he takes that hit. 15 seconds left, you have one timeout left, so you, really your whole offense is at your disposal. You can go middle of the field if you want. Remember that four by one receiver set that they had early in this game, they ran post at Doolittle Open. You know somebody on their staff recognized that, they might come back to it here. You've also moved down to the 32, so you could, in theory, from here, throw into the end zone. You could throw in the end zone or maybe get 10 more yards and try a field goal. You do have a capable kicker and do a little, and maybe get yourself thinking some positivity with a field goal. And there's that four by one. Garlic is the only receiver on the near side. Cam Garlock looked like he was going to throw back. Instead, goes to the far sideline. The pass is going to be incomplete. That's going to take off five seconds, so now you're down to 10. Yeah, it was going to be a roll to the right and then stop and throw back on a dig to your brother, but it's covered real well. There's too many guys in coverage for Liberty Center. Nobody's open because you got eight guys just staring at the quarterback. Second and 10. Couldn't be any less important. What's important is 10 seconds to go. In the half with the ball at the 32. Cam Garlock firing again to that sideline. Pass is caught. Lincoln will have it. He's out of bounds with five seconds to play. And now one final shot for the Eagles here from what looks like about the 25-yard line. Now it's got to be a throw into the end zone here with five seconds left. I'm not sure what that five yards got you, but yeah, I think they're gonna go field goal unit here. Do bring and here comes Doolittle, so they're opting to go for points. Yeah, so the hitch was just to get him a little bit more yardage up forward so they can get their field goal kicker, Kaysen Doolittle, an opportunity here. So this will be a 42-yard field goal attempt. Good snap, Doolittle with the leg. Oh, that would have been good for a lot more. Wind did catch it at the end. That's going to be no good. Had the distance. But the wind will blow that one. And that is how our first half will end. Yeah, a kick that's really indicative of how the first half was played, right? Everything went Liberty Center's way. Unfortunately for Liberty Benton, that was a tremendous kick, but at the last second, you saw it drift off to the left. Oh, Liberty Center here in the first half. And Tigers with a 27 0 lead. We'll have the second half for you after this here on WOSN. Halftime here from uh, Rex Lindgren Tiger Stadium, Kip Kern Field, Liberty Center, 27 to nothing. Host Tigers with a big lead over the Eagles of uh, Liberty Benton as uh, we play this regional quarterfinal in uh, Division 5, Region 18 with Miles Holliday. I'm Brady Roberts, partner. Knew it was going to be a tough one for Liberty Benton. Didn't think it was going to be quite this tough with a big goof, goose egg on the board. And it was a team that scored in bunches a week ago at Archbold. Points are tough to come by tonight. 
This Liberty Center defense has had a great plan, keep everything in front, and then once they catch it, come up and hit them hard. It has worked so far. It started with that opening drive for Liberty Benton. They went the length of the field and were able to put something together, but that athletic interception by uh, Landon Cruz had to reach up, really extend, come down with it, really kind of uh, took the wind out of the sails of Liberty, Cent Liberty Benton, uh, so to speak, because there's plenty of wind to go around, but uh, it uh, hasn't really worked for the Eagles. Had a drive late in the half, as you said, Liberty Center kind of backed off, mm -hmm. didn't press as much as they had been. Liberty Benton went for that 42-yard field goal, and again, the wind kind of blew that one just left, and it looked like it was going to be good. And it's been all Tigers in between. You see final minute and a half coming off the warm-up session. The Tiger faithful here are going to welcome their heroes back onto the field in a big way. <laughs> Getting a standing ovation, and they should. 27-0, and, and actually, it, it feels like it was worse, doesn't it? Yeah. 27-0 and total domination. They have not been stopped yet by that Liberty Benton uh, defense. Liberty Benton, if they're going to get back in this football game, got to get a stop early in this third quarter and get their offense some opportunities with a short field because it has just been a ground and pound and timely throws by this Liberty Center offense that has been clicking. Yeah, looking for a spot in the regional semis at a site to be determined. We'll find out. We'll come back, get you set for the second half when we return here in WOSN. Well, Liberty Center will get the football as we begin the second half. You see there, 27 other score. Liberty Center with the lead over Liberty Benton. This Division Five Region 18 Regional Quarterfinal winner. This one's going to get either Huron or Coldwater. We can tell you right now that uh, Huron pulling off a bit of a surprise, three nothing. They lead the Cavs at the half. A lot of uh, surprising halftime scores. Let's take a look at the WOSN app. By the way, that free WOSN scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. Miles and I have spent most of the halftime explaining that onside kick. Good idea for Liberty Ben trying to create something. Liberty Center knew it was coming. They're able to jump on top of it. Now the Tigers will have good field position to begin I'm their second half. Yeah, who is it? Well, it's your center, Tanner Klein, playing the front row. This is a Liberty Center special teams unit led by Paul Amstutz, who does a great job, had them ready for it. All those guys up front had their eyes on the kicker, ready for the little pooch, kicker chase it and recover. Now, you and Paul Amstutz have something in common. We do. We spent uh, some time uh, both as head coach at Evergreen. Paul was there a little bit longer than I was. Now, there's first down, a little hesitation move. Colton Cruz, who spent most of the evening running in the open space, will pick up about seven, maybe eight, and a good first down run. Take a look at the Heigl Insurance replay. Now, how about the block on the pull around? Recognize that the man had run upfield too far, so he go ahead and turns it back. Number 51 does a great job. Tyler Lay gets Cruz some good positive yardage on first down. It is a gain of seven, so second and three. Split backs in that tight formation for Liberty Center. This time they'll fake it. Zyder throw into the sideline, passes incomplete. Had a man open in Aiden Hammond tree. Just overthrew him. Wasn't able to get his feet set because Ethan Bauer, the big senior, has 10 tackles for loss on the year. Number 50 got in the backfield, was all over top of Zyder, so Zyder couldn't really get his feet set, had to drift it into the sideline. It's going to bring up third and three from the Liberty Benton 44. Important drive for Liberty Center. If they manage to find any way to put points on the scoreboard, be looking at a running clock situation. There's Orr, he can't get the first down. A nice play made there by Liberty Benton. Now Gavin Gillig, the linebacker, flies through 74. Big tackle. And don't recognize this formation in this football game, but this is a punt team coming on for Liberty Center. First stop of the game. We knew Liberty Benton had to come up with a big stop. Now they get their offense an opportunity, start chipping away at this big Liberty Center lead. And Max Walker stands back at his own 43, set to punt. Good place for a fake. That's exactly what the play is, and it's a big first down and more. 
Direct snap to the up man in Trent Cruz, and he's gonna have the SWAT welding first down. Oh, it's a great call because they're in the plus side of the yardage. Gonna snap it up to a capable runner, the up man right there. Look at the three men up front for Liberty Benton come flying upfield thinking it's punt, and all of a sudden, uh-oh, it's Cruz by you again. They're gonna tack on a few more as the officials decided to mic up the second half. There's a side, the second sideline warning, which becomes the five yard infraction. So add on five to the end of that. And now it's first and 10 at the 15 for the Tigers. Yeah, the fake punt, just a backbreaker, right? Especially if they go in and score here. Zyder under center, hands it off. Cruz trying to bounce to the outside. He's gonna continue to fight forward going to take about four, maybe five guys to bring him down, and it's going to bring him second down. And they go back to that unbalanced line where they put the killer bees on a side, Bockelman and Box, and then they're going to pull lay around. It's almost like the old student body. Absolutely everybody in black jerseys running to the left. Well played, though, by Liberty Benton. Second and eight following the gain of two. Uh, the officials... Monishing a couple of linemen for Liberty Benton. I think they stepped over the line of scrimmage. It's one of those nights where I think even if Liberty Center told Liberty Benton the play they're going to run, they're going to succeed. Zyder is going to turn the corner. Got a flag down as he's in for the touchdown, but we'll have to see what the penalty flag is. Miles has a pretty good idea what this is going to be. Yeah, creative blocking is going to get called against Liberty Center. I think it's going to be Klein that's going to be called for it. The center was trying to pick up a linebacker blitz. Now they're going to be Lay actually. Lay is the guard that pulls around on the fake. This is a bootleg to the right hand side, and you're going to pull the guard around to help protect the quarterback. But if we get the replay, we'll show you that he just gets a little too handsy. Back the Tigers up to the Liberty Benton 28. Makes it second and about 20 now. Liberty Center fans, at least around us, kind of knew a very tempered celebration of what they thought was a touchdown. Here's Zyder. He's going to keep this one. Cuts up field. Another flag coming in. See what this one is about as Zyder's able to get to about the 18-yard line. I think, again, this is going to get called back. I think it's going to be right there, number 24 on the outside. Colton Chambers, I think, they're going to say he used his hands inappropriately. Officials still getting together. <laughs> like Cider runs the officials. Hey, since you guys are all right here, here's the ball. <laughs> Is there a quicker guy for 10 yards than Zane Zider, though? When he makes that decision, puts that foot in the ground, he just eats up all kinds of yard. And I got to call it on Tanner Klein. Two holding penalties, and why you decline to one is because it's a spot foul, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to take the one that's furthest back. And we'll say second and Napoleon, the distance coming up here for Liberty Center. Back-to-back -back holding calls has moved this back to the 40-yard line. And you got to be aware of the tight end throwback screen that's always in the playbook of wing T teams. Zyder looking to throw, has a man open. Hammond Tree with a big gain as he's going to get back as Liberty Center is going to get right back on schedule here. Partner, this is nothing more than verticals. And Hammond Tree is just going to run straight up the middle of the field. Nobody is there as he splits the secondary in half. Seth Eckert makes another tackle, but Eckert had bailed from the middle of the field, vacated, allowed Hammond Tree to get a big reception. Down and Pass play goes for about 33 yards. And second and long turns into third and three. A single receiver on the other side. Zyder with a give. And it is Cruz. Cruises his way in for the KK Collision touchdown. They will just pound C gap if you allow them to. Getting a double tight set with one receiver, and they're just going to keep on pounding. Look at the block by Box. Gets a pancake. Good kick out right there by Orr. 
Cruise, cruise his way into the end zone. Touchdown sponsor tonight is KK Collision, your first call for automotive body, mechanical shop, and light and heavy duty towing. Extra point on its way, kick is up, and the extra point this time is good. So now 34 nothing in our Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. So 34 nothing. Miles, time for your favorite little guy to make an appearance. Yeah, the giant the head of the clock with the little feet. And it took me to a couple of weeks ago where I realized he actually does have hands. I thought he had no hands all these years, but there they are. They're actually on the clock. Greater than 30 point differential in the second quarter. How's the stop partner? Well, for timeouts, end of quarter, scoring, and any unusual delay, which I'm still waiting for a definition on an unusual delay. What is so, that? So an a usual delay will... <laughs> well, nothing unusual well, about this performance for Liberty Center. They've what, been absolutely what a, dominant. What an unusual delay is, is our producer, Ken Reeker. You've watched, you've been NFL games. I have. They have the guy in the sideline, lets them know, hey, you can start. Yep. So an unusual delay is our producer, Ken Reeker, going, hey, we haven't taken enough commercials. Let's take a time out here. <laughs> That's the unusual delay. If you so. don't get all your spots, you just keep reading them, That's right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> 34-0. This is a Liberty Benton offense that with the number of points they scored a week ago, we thought they'd be able to score with Liberty Center a little bit. Wobbler kick is going to be fielded by one of the up men at the 20-yard line. He had to race back to get it. That is Miles Bailey, the backup quarterback, number five. Number five. And he will take this out to about the 25-yard line. Well, it kind of made Miles regret fielding that one. The rule is if it's at your head, you let it go to the guy behind you. But Miles caught it because it was directly at him. And got to be careful how physical you are with guys named Miles. You want to be nice to guys named Miles. So you see the uh, Liberty Benton student section. I don't know if that's just unfortunate. Is that the Tiger? We have he is wearing a Tiger outfit, isn't he? That's unfortunate. Either didn't think about it, mm. or, oh, I can wear my Halloween costume. So here's Garlock, first down, pass is caught. Here's Maud. Mason Maud mentioned, uh, mentioned our pregame, had a big night, four Garlock's touchdowns last week. Been kind of quiet, so he'll pick up a couple of yards there. Hey, remember Bill Walsh with the 49ers, and Yak was a big thing for them, right? Yards after catch. Boy, the Yak yardage for Liberty Benton has been non existent. Every time they've caught the football, They've been thumped by a black jersey. Pick up a three, second and seven now. Pass long, pass. Doolittle go off his hands incomplete. What is it about 49ers and just wanting running backs that can catch the ball? What about running backs that can throw the ball? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, like, throw, catch, run. Did it all last week, didn't he? What a great trade for your 49ers. It's third and seven coming up here for the Eagles. That clock will continue to run until Liberty Benton can get it back down under the 30-point differential. Garlock now will get a flag. Looks like a little bit of movement up front on Liberty Benton. I actually think they're going to call the receiver on the outside, Seth Elkert. Yeah, Elkert it is on the outside, left a little bit early, which, partner, I always argue with my receiver coaches back in the day, all your receiver has to do is watch the football, right? Why are they leaving early? Can't we play by Canadian rules? Just let the guys run around. Let them get a 20-yard running head start, take off. By the way, first-round CFL playoffs will be on Sunday. I'll tell you, that'll be on my television. Third and 12, there's one. Drops it right into the bucket for his brother Lincoln. Able to take on two defenders, still on his feet. Finally, he's going to be brought down, not after a big gain, and it's going to be Swat and Welding first down for Liberty Benton. Yeah, best throw of the night here by Cam. Fakes the hitch, gonna get Zacharias to fly up, allows the deep third to open up, picking on to safety. This is a great throw, and then puts on the brakes a little bit, gets some extra yardage. Garlic to Garlock cooking. First downs tonight brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company, provided custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more, swantonweld.com. First down, Liberty Benton from the Tiger 37. Garlock looking to throw once again, under pressure. Going to throw to the far sideline, nobody there. It's going to be incomplete. Had a receiver 
somewhat nearby. That's the argument for Liberty Benton. Looks like they will get the call. I'll tell you, not a bad catch by the coach on the sideline. Got a little bend at the hips, got his hands underneath it. Should have turned and ran after he caught that ball. Good coverage again by that Liberty Center secondary. Second and 10 coming up here from the 37. Garlock might have lost the mouthpiece. Cam put that back in, gets the snap. Rolls to the left, fires, which is the natural way for the left-hander. Pass is caught. It's gonna be close to another swat and welding first down. Once again, he finds his brother. And went back to that curl, and then the wheel route outside of it. That time, they finally got the curl open, and they're gonna say he had enough for the first down. First down, first down throw. That one's gonna be batted away. Zayden Hammetree comes up with a big play defensively. Hammetree's had himself a night. This time uses a six foot five frame. Can't get to the quarterback? Well, you put your hands in the air when the quarterback goes to throw it. Hammetree plays a little volleyball that time. Saw a replay brought to you tonight by Heigl Insurance and Finley. They've over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, offering coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. Second and 10 from the 37. Lincoln Garlock looking big diving effort comes up just short. Case and Doolittle unable to hang on to that one, and it's gonna bring him up third down. Pretty good hand fighting here, especially by Zacharias. You're gonna see him bump and Doolittle. Does it just subtly enough. See how he had his right hand pull down the hand of Doolittle? That is good coverage. Did it just enough where the official isn't gonna flag it. Good look at the crowd to the end zone to our right. They're about three deep. About three deep to the left with the band stands in that side. Big third down coming up here as Liberty Benton trying to keep this drive alive. Garlock under pressure. He's gonna be thrown down back in his own 32 as Owen Box comes up with a sack for the Tigers. Uh, defensive player of the year in the NWAL uses a spin move that time. Gets his big left paw on the quarterback then spins him to the ground. We talked about getting pressure with three. That time Owen Box delivers a big. Big sack. Loss of five is going to bring up fourth and 15. Well, no doubt about it, you got to go. Just make sure you make a throw near the sticks. Don't throw it short. Cam Garlock fires. That one is going to be over the head of everyone. Ends up into the end zone incomplete. Tiger defense will hold. With a change of possession, Liberty Center will take over late in the third quarter. A little stun up front by Liberty Center. Hammond Tree makes this throw a little more difficult. Good cover by Zyder and by Cruz. Double team the dynamic freshman Seth Elkert. Turns the ball over. Great job again by that Liberty Center secondary. Tigers take over at their own 32. 2.40 left to go here in our third quarter. Once balls whistled in play, that clock will begin to run. So. Liberty Center traditionally will run some time off the clock. We'll get a little help with that running clock. Might see some reserves begin to uh, sprinkle their way into this one as well. Zyder right now still in there along with Orr. First down handoff will get to about the 35. Orr carries the ball. And last week in that 61-20 win over Port Clinton, Liberty Center ran for 432 yards. Second down and seven. That, that's a pretty amazing stat for a playoff. 421 yards, seven different ball carriers. He's actually on the sideline. You see the second unit. Looks like in the quarter break, we might have him come in here. As you see, looks like the second unit might be uh, getting together here. Good. Also good to see uh, Landon Amstutz in uniform tonight as well. Missed most of the year with an injury. Yeah, moving pretty well in pregame. Looks like he's going to be okay moving forward. It's a good stop there on second down. Chambers trying to get that stretch play. That play is going to be blown up. Yeah, watch Otley, 62. He's going to shoot the gap as they try to pull around him. Otley, the man who has lived in the backfield all year long, gets his second tackle here tonight. 23rd tackle for loss on the year. It's going to bring up third and 11. Liberty Center trying to time this right, or maybe they can get away with only having to run one more play before we get to the end of the quarter. Zyder is going to keep this one, take off and run, 
And a big first down, he dives forward. He's gonna have the Swanton Welding first down out to the 43 yard line. I tell you, when he makes a decision, he makes a full go, doesn't he? He puts the foot in the ground and then seemingly in two steps has got 10 yards. Zane Sider is sensational. I'll mark him at the 44. Difference of about 12 seconds between the game clock, play clock, so there will be one more snap this quarter. He might be the perfect quarterback for this system, right? Can do things with his feet, he's got a strong enough arm, doesn't have to throw the ball 20 times to be effective. Back to the I formation, they'll give to the first man through. Another big run for Orr. I think he's Orr because he can be tailback or fullback, he's the fullback there. Uh, this is the more than the inside trap, this is the 21 trap, down block inside. Orr just burst by the second level before you recognize it. And those, those four yard runs become 10, 12, 15 as the game goes longer. And that's gonna be the end of the third quarter. All Tigers will have the fourth quarter for you coming up after this. Thirty-four nothing. Our score. Liberty Center with the lead over Liberty Benton as we move into quarter number four here. Kip Kern Field, the Rex Lindgren Tiger Stadium in Liberty Center. Final week of uh, home sites as we move to uh, neutral fields for the next uh, two, three rounds of the playoffs. We'll have uh, regional semifinals, also final night of uh, all games on Friday. The neutral sites, a lot of them want to double up. Uh, makes a lot of sense for multiple games to be played on one site, so they go Friday, Saturday. So divisions one, two, three, and five will be on Friday. Four, six, and seven be on Saturday. First down run. That pile still continues to move. The starter still on the field for Liberty Center. It's going to be, looks like another Swat Welding first down on that run. Yeah, it shows you the strength of Orr. He's going to run through an arm tackle, Multibine, who's a really strong fella. Number 75 had him, but just keep moving your feet, moving your feet, moving your feet. Drags him for about eight yards. We talk about the neutral sites. What are what's some of the criteria that you have to have to get a neutral site game? Uh, a lot of it is uh, turf. There's uh, certain things, uh, number of seats. There's some things, uh, some stuff with wheelchairs, some accessibility for uh, proximity to the school. Some proxy, yeah. So it's a uh, nice little list. Tough run there on first down. It's, uh, Little meeting in the backfield for the Liberty Benton defense. Number two, Colton yeah, Ethan Bauer that gets in there first, number 50. Had himself a pretty good game on the defensive line for Liberty Benton. And if that was a replay by Zyder, I think he should have pulled because the entire defensive line was on that in a hurry. I think Cruz was probably telling him in a huddle, go ahead and pull that, buddy. It's a loss of two on the run. It's going to bring him second and 12. Do you understand Coldwater scored a touchdown. They now have a 7-3 lead over here on. Eight minutes uh, left to go in the third quarter. Another good run by Cruz. He's run that stretch play well, has come out. And now, looks like fans will take a look at the Heigl Insurance replay. We see something here. Yeah, watch Navarre pull around, get a pancake right there. But the Liberty Center faithful are gonna be a little upset because look at the head turn right there, a little, a little extra. Don't like you so much. That's Gavin Gillig getting a little extra in on the tackle. It's going to bring up third and seven after the run. Yeah, you hope that frustration doesn't set in to the point where you do something that is across the line. Split backs once again. And now problems. Somebody moved. Good call. Yeah. I think it's going to be against the offense. Boy, that own box. What, what is he doing out there? <laughs> That's one of those you don't even mention in film tomorrow because Owen makes so many plays for you, right? You just skip by it. Going to back things up now to a third and 12 with that running clock. See, already down inside of 10 minutes to go in our fourth and final quarter. So Liberty Center, it looks like we'll move on to 12 and 0. Liberty Benton season will end at 8 and 4. Also, we're hearing that uh, Tenora up into the third quarter against Elmwood. 
Tough run there as Cruz, we got tripped up or got brought down anyways. He's going to bring up a fourth down for Liberty Center. It kind of looked like the 29-yard line just bit up and jumped up and bit him, didn't it? You know, they don't they don't bother to tell the teams that when they get the turf fields. That you, you will you, you will, will get a turf yeah. monster. That like, is it, true. it comes with it. That's that's free. That's that and all the free little black pellets you ever wanted. <laughs> Used to pour them out of my shoe at the end of the night. Offense stays on the field for Liberty Center. Want to work on a few things up 34 nothing here, fourth and about 13. Zyder steps, fires, has a man open. Nice job using his body to shield away the defender. Pass is caught, Landon Cruz with it. And it looks like that's going to be enough for Swan Welding first down as the Tigers convert on fourth down. And not often do you see yourself rolling to a one receiver side, but it's going to be a deep out. Landon Cruz, who's come up with big plays. On the defensive end tonight, that time gets a big play on the offensive side with a great catch on the sideline. Moves it inside the 15 down to the 14, first and 10. Middle level the press box to collect your red iPhone with a red face. Split backs once again. Tigers trying to finish off this drive. Here's the give. This is Cruz. And he'll get close to the 10. Number two, little, Cruz well, pushing and shoving by some of the linemen continue on after the whistle. A good blitz pick up that time by the right-hand side of Liberty Center's offensive line. Easy for offensive linemen to, to pick up a blitz when you see the linebacker creeping. When he creep, creep, creeps, you call down, you let your buddy know that there's a blitz coming. The guys that can sprint to the blitz and time it up, that's the blitzers that you want if you're a defensive play caller. Gain of four in the run is going to bring up second and six from the 10-yard line. Or once again, working his way in, and he's going to power his way in for the KK Collision touchdown. Now yet another offensive possession results in points for Liberty Center. Doesn't matter if it's running clock or not. Good block by Cruz inside or with a stiff arm to get himself free for the last three yards and easy touchdown third one of the night for Matthew Orr. I was, that was me asking. I guess I should have. I don't know. What was his third of the night, right? <laughs> they all kind of get lost in your memory, don't they? There's so many of them. Yeah, but that's the third one for Matthew Orr. Extra point up and good as well. A little extracurricular activity on the extra point, and the officials might have to step in, so all Liberty Center, 41-0. Tigers the big lead. We'll take a break here in WSF. Forty-one nothing. Our score here, at Liberty Center, with a big lead as Tigers prepare to kick off. As uh, if cheerleaders have switched from popcorn balls to looks like mini footballs into the stands, our direction. There's some schools that are going to be needing quarterbacks next year, and they might want to come recruit some of these cheerleaders because their throws are absolutely amazing. One went in the press box behind us. That's a 30-yard throw. Is there anyone in the community here at Liberty Center that can't handle football? No. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I think you're given one at birth, male or female. <laughs> I had teams that couldn't throw the ball as well as those girls just did. And Liberty Benton start this drive of their own 19-yard line. Take off and run. Cam Garlock still out there. It looks like both teams are going to go with their starters here as long as they can. Garlock take a big hit and jumps back up. I always had a rule partner that if you're a senior and it looks like it's your last game, you can play as long as you want. If you want out of the game, we'll, we'll let you come out. But... Usually guys want to play the last snap no matter what the score is. Scramble goes for no gain. It's going to bring up second and ten. Garlock looking to throw another long one, trying to hit his brother, get it to, out to Lincoln. Needs to get just shy of the 30-yard line for the Swanton Welding first down. Looks like they'll get just that. They're going to go a little hurry-up tempo. It'll be out, out, outside another long throw. Garlic to Garlic, coached by Garlic. Something that's going to be very teary eyed at the end of this game for those three. Pick up a 12, now setting up the screen. Big block. It's going to break Lincoln free. He's going to run back middle of the field, and he is going to take a big hit. A flag will come out 
the end of this one. I believe, and we'll have to look, I think Colton Cruz number two is the one who supplied the hit that I believe the officials are talking about. You might have heard the Liberty Center faithful on our microphones, but they were not happy that the flag came out. They thought it was a clean hit. We'll see what the call is here. Colton Cruz is going to be the one called. Let's take a look at it here. Going back to that screen, gets a great block to get himself free. Garlic's going to come back to the middle of the field, and he's going to get dialed up by Colton Cruz right there, leads with the head. I think it was the forearm, though, it got the chest. 15-yard penalty moves us up to the 48-yard line. Nice pass on the money. So there's a receiver cutting in the middle of the field. That one's hauled in. By Doolittle is Liberty Benton trying to hurry up. They want to get that goose egg off the scoreboard here with four minutes to go in the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Another Swan Welding first down to the 38. Garlock, nice, able to stop. He'll come forward. He'll get out to about the 32. Garlock carries the ball. But we have officials. One official, one of the clock stopped. Yeah, I wondered if Liberty Benton had called timeout, but they didn't signal it. Officials said stop the clock. But the clock is still running, and everybody's just standing. Liberty Benton ready to go. They're lined up. They're in formation. So Liberty Benton whistled for its second Third, well, one's the warning. One's the warning. Warning, and then the two penalties. It cost themselves a minute and a half on the clock. They're trying to get a score here to end this football game. It's back to second and about 10, maybe nine and a half. Garlock trying to find someone open. Scrambles and hits the receiver. This one's going to be out of bounds. Looks like a new receiver making its way into the uh, game. Number 27, that is Caden Boutwell, senior. Yeah, senior getting himself a catch, number 27. Works the sideline, comes back to the quarterback as you're taught the scramble drill. It's enough for Swanton Welding, first down to the 16. Garlock throwing again. This one caught out to that far sideline. Receiver will be taken out of bounds. That is caught by Lee Meyer. And Garlock throws it before his receiver and he makes the break. Good job by Lee Meyer. Keeping his eyes down below the hips. You got to get your hands underneath it. Brings up four, or brings up second and six after the gain of four. Garlock looking to throw once again. The wobbler, that one's caught. And Mod will take a big hit, but it looks like he will. I don't think he got in. Not be in the end zone. They're going to call him just short. Now the hit by Klein, I think, turns him around. And yeah, Mod's going to come across on the under route. Looks like he's going to score right there. Great catch, though, getting the back end of the football. And then the tackle by Klein spins him around. Yeah, the ball never crossed the goal line. So they'll have to go to a quarterback sneak. And it looks like that one, still no signal. And it looks like he does get in here with a minute 36 to go in this one. Now, kind of fitting that they get a touchdown for Cam Garlic. Garlic's been such a dynamic player for this Liberty Benton team all over the years. I know it's not going to feel good at the end of the night that they lose their playoff game and his career in high school is over, but at least he gets the feel-good moment of scoring a touchdown in the playoffs. Yeah, he'll do the holding on the extra point here as Doolittle steps up. Minute 36 to go, extra point on its way, and the kick is good. So 41-7. Liberty Center will get the lead here. They'll have to uh, wind the final few moments. So if we can, I know some of the other games not quite final yet. We'll take a look at that uh, Division Five Region 18 bracket once again. As uh, Liberty Center will be moving on. So they'll be off to a regional semifinal at a site yet to be determined. 
Last we had heard, Coldwater and Huron were stuck in a uh, battle. So once we get some uh, finals, once everyone kind of knows what's going on. So we went ahead and marked in Liberty Center. So they'll move on. They'll get again either Coldwater or Huron. As I check the uh, WOSN scores app, can't tell you right now. Coldwater, the 7-3 lead going into the fourth quarter. Other games in the region, a battle as well. So everything outside of this one here in Liberty Center. Really close, tough football games. Elmwood with a late score. They've now taken the lead over Tenora, 21-15, heading into the fourth quarter. Eastwood with a couple of scores. Pulled away. They now lead Oak Harbor, 24-14. Five and a half minutes to go. Doolittle to kick off for the Eagles. So Doolittle set to kick here. Deep kick, you use him as a weapon as this one goes through the end zone. And it'll be a touchback and Liberty Center will start the 20 yard line. As Miles had mentioned, the uh, seniors it looks like for Liberty Center will be playing their last game here at home so they will stay on the field. Clock will begin to start once the officials blow this in for play. There we go. Looks like the Tigers will do nothing more than let that clock run all the way down and take a knee. The first one coming right now. And it looks like they'll have to do it just one more time. The ball in the Virginia Punt formation. So trying to get everyone in for one final play. So Liberty's going to move on. Tigers will stay perfect. Again, will await an opponent throughout the night in a couple of close games. Also, find out officially from the state Sunday afternoon where all the regional semifinals around the state will be held. Of course, you can uh, follow WOSN on social media. They'll do the best they can. Once we know, we'll let everyone know. As the final knee is down, the final 15 seconds will run off in our final tonight here at Rex Lindgren Tiger Stadium. All Tigers as they roll to a 41-7 win over the Eagles of Liberty Benton in this Division 5 Region 18 second round matchup. So the Tigers get the win, they stay undefeated. We'll take a break when we come back. Our Miles Holiday will be down on the field with our dynamic due to the game when we return. Final score once again from Liberty Center. The Tigers with a 41-7 win over the Eagles of Liberty Benton. So Liberty Center now move on to a regional semifinal. The site yet to be determined next week. But we head down onto the field. Our Miles Holiday has caught up with tonight's dynamic dude. Our dynamic dude of the night. Three touchdowns for you, Matt. Matt Orr, there's your helmet, buddy. You get the dynamic dude WOSN helmet. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you guys ran the football extremely well. How are you guys able to get that done up front? Yeah, well, that starts all with the linemen, you know. Uh, during the week, they work their butts off. Uh, the scout team gives them a great look. And then, you know, they, they're, they're dudes up there, and they'll take care of anyone. This was a really high-powered offense you guys went against with Liberty Benton. Scored at will a week ago against Archbold. You guys had your work cut out for you. You guys really rose to the challenge defensively. You played linebacker all night. What was the game plan to stop this team? Yeah, so obviously uh, our defensive philosophy is that we want to be the most physical team out here. You know, that starts with our, our defensive line. They do a great job. And then that continues to our linebackers and then our DBs. And I, if everyone uh, did their job, we felt that we had a chance tonight. And that's what would happen. You left the field. You had some emotion. You could see it in your eyes. Last time you're playing a football game here as a senior. Walk us through some of those emotions leaving here as a, a win on the second round of the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I mean, it means a lot. Uh, you know, we, we asked the underclassmen to play for the seniors, you know, because, you know, it really is the last time we'll ever play on this field. 
and we wanted to leave it victorious. That was one of our goals going into the season, that we wouldn't lose on our home field this year, and uh, that means a lot to all of our seniors. You guys are excited about getting a win, but it doesn't seem like you're really celebrating because you have bigger goals. How deep do you think this football team can go? Uh, I believe that if we stay focused and continue on with uh, our quest and our path and we just can continue to complete the task at hand, uh, I think the sky's the limit for us. Yeah, Matt, congratulations. Good luck moving forward. Matt Orr, our dynamic dude of the night. This guy, he really was dynamic, Randy. Yeah, an unbelievable game again. Three touchdown night for the senior as uh, the Tigers roll on again, 41-7. So awaiting uh, the uh, final from uh, Huron and Coldwater, they'll figure out their opponent. And of course, the uh, Ohio High School Athletic Association will announce the site for that sometime on Sunday. We want to thank everyone who made our night possible here at uh, Kip Kern Field and Rex Lindgren Tiger Stadium. Starts Caleb Pullman, the athletic director at Liberty Center. Can't thank uh, Rick and Sam enough for their work on the cameras. And of course, uh, Kelly gets master control. And the guy that makes it all work, our guy hanging out downstairs in his little tent. That is our director and producer, Ken Reeker. So once again, our final tonight, 41-7. Liberty Center gets the big win over Liberty Benton for my partner, Miles Holiday, and our entire WOSN crew. Thanks for watching, everyone.